Hi there, and welcome to my channel. Today we are making chicken cutlets with chive gravy. Chives are one of the very first perennial plants that come up in our zone three gardening here in Southern Alberta, and you like to get them right away. For today, we are using salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and dried sage for our seasonings. The oil is for frying, and the flour and the butter is for the gravy. Of course, we have our fresh chives, two eggs, and we have flour and panko for our dredges. And not to be forgotten, we have two boneless skinless chicken breasts. I began by slicing those chicken breasts into smaller pieces and I put the fillets of the chicken just onto a plate until I was ready. Be careful doing this guys, you don't want to cut yourself. They're a great size for making breaded cutlets now. There are a few ways that you can tenderize your meat. If you don't have a tenderizer, you could take a heavy pan and you could smash them. You could use a meat mallet like that white thing, or you could use just a regular old rolling pin and whack them on the counter. I like to sandwich my chicken slices between two pieces of saran wrap because the saran wrap protects you from all the flying juices. One piece on the bottom and one piece on the top. I get to the business of smashing these pieces of chicken, tenderizing them while I am. If you ever had minute steaks, this is really similar to what they do to minute steaks. Now, I don't reuse my saran wrap because I'm rather violent, apparently, when I'm tenderizing my chicken and I end up making holes in the saran wrap. So I use new pieces every time. I have placed my dredges into the pans and to those I am adding the salt and pepper, the garlic powder, the onion powder, and the dried sage. One pan has the flour and one hand pan has the panko and of course the two eggs are in a bowl at the back. To the eggs I added a little bit of Frank's hot sauce just for some pizzazz. I heated the oil in the pan and I start off by dredging my chicken pieces in the flour. You want to be sure to coat both sides because this really is the part where you make or break this meal. You want to make sure that it's completely coated with all the steps. Now the egg dip before the panko breadcrumbs. The panko breadcrumbs are the crunch on the outside of your chicken. Don't crowd your frying pan when you're frying these. And you should know that as you're frying them, the little cutlets will absorb the oil. I know it's not super healthy, but oh my gosh, it's just delicious, you guys. So you will be needing to add more oil to the pan. These only take about three minutes to cook per side. And when they were done, I put them all in this tray. That's two chicken breasts, you guys. I just kept them warm in my toaster oven until my gravy was done. I put the butter in the pan. No need to remove the oil or the bits because those add extra flavor. I put my flour in and well, it just kind of all came at once. I really didn't mean to do that. And you want to make sure that you have enough butter in your pan to dampen all your flour. That's very important. So all my flour is damp and I started by adding some water to it. I just wanted that flour to become more of a paste before I added my milk, which I forgot to add to the ingredients. So after a bit, I added enough water to create the paste. I felt comfortable adding my milk. This whole process, you guys, took about five minutes and I shortened it up for you, but please don't rush these steps. You'll end up with lumpy gravy or something that you don't enjoy. 
and it's not um, it's not hard but it is time consuming and you don't want to be in a hurry for these steps a little taste test told me that I needed to add some salt and pepper so I did and at this time I added my chopped up chives I wanted them in at the very end so that they didn't disappear and turn my sauce green. Not that that would have mattered. The taste would have been there. And there it is, folks. Enjoy, and thanks for watching.